Hey, it's Mikey from Rockin' K. If you don't know who we are, we are a couple doing the DIY homesteading and off-gridding thing. What makes this different is we're doing it in Germany. So this week, uh, if you watched the previous video, we have some work to do in the winter garden. And I also have room to work, work to do in the heating room. So that's coming up. Okay, folks, so we got a little bit of a break in the weather. And in doing that electrical stuff, I got to see what I have uh, when it comes to supplies. Because I've been working on the solar system for a while now. Doing it little bit by little bit. Because everything else has to take precedence, firewood, stuff like that. It, it has to be done. So, what we have is a 3,500 watt inverter and distribution boxes and everything. This one is where the power comes in. So that power comes in and actually feeds the hybrid inverter when it's in bypass mode, which it currently is. And as you can see right now, there's only one live circuit. That's this one here that's powering my garages and all the lights in here. So we have additional circuits right here. And that's the four connections up here. And you can see there's two empty tubes. So one of those is going to go to where Mama wants to put her winter garden. So we'll run that, that wire. And we'll get it down to the winter garden and everything. The wire actually is already in the ground. And we just have to hook up this end. And, of course, you saw the other end in last week's uh, installment. But we'll, we'll show you that again. So we got a bit of work cut out for us. Um, this is just one of one of my garages. That shelf you see up top behind me with the uh, turkey fire bucket and the drill case. That's where the batteries are going to end up, and then it's going to feed down and to the inverter. So the plan is to have enough battery to run everything for a couple of days, and you know we'll see. I have enough battery right now. I can get through at least one full day without power. That's where the cables go in the ground, and they run all along and to the basement. So the hard work's already done. I dug that trench this, this uh, summer and installed uh, not only conduit, but actual earth, uh, earth cable inside conduit, so it's kind of double protected. But now I'm poking around in here because I need to make sure that I have the outlets and everything that she needs for her winter garden. Now down here you can see I went ahead and I bought all these gray outlets and the reason I'm using a different style outlet is so I can easily identify what's being fed by the solar. Um, it'll also help me. I'm going to have them all labeled um, as solar and actually you know less than 500 watts on each receptacle so that if somebody not me goes to use it, they know, hey, you're going to pop my breaker and you're going to shut my, my power down. It'll reset itself, but kind of save the hassle. I can let people know, hey, that's the gray outlet. Don't use that, you know, because I use, I'm going to be using it in the workshop as well. So I figured 500 watts is a safe, a safe place because none of the loads that we'll ever put on these outlets is going to be um, a constant load. Um, what I'm moving on to the solar system is going to be my warm pump, my heating system, mama's winter garden, and then any, it's just nickel dime stuff for, you know, like the garage door openers and stuff like that, that I always want to have power. Uh, the freezer always want to have power. So if somebody plugs in something like, um, a charger or something like that, it's not really going to hurt the system. It's not going to pop the breaker. You know, plus 
people shouldn't be plugging in stuff in your own in your house not without asking you so but anyway i do have the outlets i have some switches too i do have the three led tube style lights that she wants to put in on the ceiling so we'll go ahead and uh, round up all the materials and we'll get them down in the basement so all right here we are we're in the winter garden for this year so I think what we're going to end up doing is, let me flip you around so we can get a good perspective on this. So in the middle of that gap between the window and the wall, right in the middle, we'll put a double outlet. Same thing in the gap here. And then another double, pretty much where that original outlet is. So that you'll have a double outlet there, a double outlet there, and a double outlet there. This way she can run these little LED grow lights, which are 50 watts a piece. Then I think I've decided that the lights will go like that, but of course on the ceiling, um, in this orientation, because that, that will let me um, run into the, the one on the left. Come out of the one on the left to the one on the right, feed it, and then come out of this one onto this one and feed that one. So that'll all be fed off of here. So I do have to make a trip to our version of Home Depot, but not today because they're closed. It's Wednesday, and it's All Saints Day here in Germany, so it's a holiday. But I do want to get a normal colored outlet for here because this is not going to be on the solar system so in order to keep that that separation um, I'm just gonna get the same style like this which is a switch on one end and an outlet on the other they have this style in white with the gray lids um, I'll do that this way she knows hey that's you know off of the regular power not the solar power um, that it's okay to plug, you know, this way if she wants to run the vacuum or something like that, because we have a huge shop vac that draws like a thousand watts, um, she could go ahead and plug the shop vac in there and not worry about uh, popping a breaker or anything like that, that it, it'll be the, the heavy feed coming from upstairs feeding the, um, that setup. And then out here where we're putting the warm pump, I have another outlet that I'm going to put here in the process because I figure I'll just make that all one one leg um, and then make an individual leg for the heating room. So we'll make one of these the basement right here and we'll make this one the heating room. The heating room already does come all the way from the heating room and into the basement. Of course I had to feed it somehow. so. That line is actually this line right here above my head. So all we're gonna do is take that line and reroute it over here along next to the pipes and bring it around and attach it here. So that I know in the winter, if the power goes out, the batteries, which I have, they're not hooked up. That's coming up soon. Um, that they'll run the heating system should we have a power outage because the heating system, of course, has a fan that blows in the, um, the wood boiler and then it has the two pumps that circulate the water around through the house. So if I have the battery power and because it only draws like 100 watts-ish, and I have, I think, I think the measurement was 13.4 kilowatt hours or 13.4, yeah, 13.4 kilowatt hours of supply in these batteries, meaning um, at 100 watts, I should be able to run it for, uh, what is that, 130 hours, 134 hours, something like that. Um, that's a couple of days without power. We just need to make sure that we're not running anything else on that system 
uh, and we can have heat and not have to worry about freezing. Um, we have propane heaters and stuff like that, but if we can use the normal heat because we have battery, plus I have a huge diesel generator. We'll talk more about that. Yeah, that was uh, an investment I had to make. <laughs> um, but I do have a huge uh, diesel generator. Well, not huge, but a large diesel generator that uh, we could also use to power if, if we end up for an extended period without power. But I'm actually going to do a review on that generator because it is another Chinese knockoff uh, that I bought here in Germany. I drove all the way to Bonn to pick it up. I know we're going down a rabbit hole, but I'll give you a quick little story. Uh, I drove down to Bonn to pick it up because we needed a power supply for the construction site. And it was the easiest, quickest. The rental was costing me 80 euro per day and about 60 bucks in gasoline per day because this thing was just drinking gas. So I bought a diesel generator for 2,000 euro that was twice the size of the generator that I had. And yeah, it paid for itself in a matter of two weeks. And it was on site for something like three months, two and, two and a half months. So it did pay for itself. Um, plus, man, it'll run forever on a tank of fuel. But we'll, we'll do more about that later. But we did go down a rabbit hole. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting over a little bit of a, a head, chest, cold thing, whatever. Uh, came home, Mama had it. She gave it to me, of course. And so, but I'm getting over it. That's why uh, we're starting here on a Wednesday and we didn't do much work on Monday or Tuesday. One, it has been raining nonstop since Friday. Two, I've been sick. <coughs> so enough on that. I got to go get tools. I got to go get supplies. So we'll come back when we're ready to, to sling some wire. All right, folks, we are back. And you know how plans are. Plans change. So. There's a little bit of a break in the weather. As you can see, we got some a little bit of gray clouds, but the rain has stopped for right now. But we're probably getting more. Good news is the truck is back. We got the Ranger back. It's got the new diesel particle filter. So, like I said, plans change because of the weather. So we have a hole in the weather. I am going to go with the tractor and grab some of the wood because. Right now, we've been burning wood for a couple of weeks, and <laughs> we're getting low on wood. I do have quite a bit, but um, it I don't know if it's ready, so I can buy some that's already dry, or I can cut mine and test it and see what, how it's doing. So, first things first, we will go get some firewood on the forks. We're just going to leave it on the forks in the, in the carport because it's still a little chilly and I do need to work on rewiring that the rest of that wood stove. So, let me go over here and move the truck. We'll jump on the tractor. We'll go get us some wood. Okay, folks, so apparently my audio is not working. What I'm telling you here is the wood is right outside that window. And while I was going to use the tractor to go ahead and bring that wood around, it is a lot easier to just open that window and throw the wood into the room. That's the way I normally do it. So what I'm, what I'm basically telling you here is instead of driving all the way around, it's easier to throw it in that window. So what we do is take the window out, throw the wood in, and then it's right there near near the saw where I normally use it. And so we will fast forward from this point, and hopefully the next segment has audio.
All right, folks, so I was editing and found out that at some point, this microphone stopped working. And so I had probably, I don't know, 45 minutes worth of footage with no audio. With that said, I was able to speed up the video, which you just saw. And what you see us doing is going ahead and using this big saw to cut up the wood. Let me flip you around. Now this saw is nothing but what it looks like. It is a huge, huge, huge circular saw. And as you saw, you load your wood in here, you tip your carriage, and it cuts the wood. This, this saw has a big, let me get it unlocked, a big circular saw in it. It's a really big saw blade and it cuts the wood. It's really efficient and what we did was we cut wood for a little, right around 20 minutes. And that pile that you see uh, that we made took us only 20 minutes to cut. Of course, earlier today, you saw me throw all this in. This is a little more than the last pile, so I think that will take me probably about 25, 30 minutes to, to cut it. But I apologize for the lack of audio. These things happen, especially to me. <laughs> so with that said, we're going to continue on with the video, and we'll talk about the rest of the work that I did today. All right, next day. Well, I'd like to say uh, good morning. It definitely is a morning. Uh, it is just afternoon. I uh, got a bit of a late start. Um, I probably, like most of you, watch a little bit of YouTube. It is Saturday. Um, watch a bit of YouTube, get my day going, stuff like that. And I watch a couple of channels that they're they're all related. Um, they call themselves family, which yes, family is family. Uh, that's friends that are family. Uh, one of the one of the channels, the guy was cutting trees and got hit by one of his trees. Um, so he ended up injured, and I had to watch. I you know, I, I feel connected to these guys. They're part of the reason that I started my channel. Um, they don't know me. They don't know of me uh, yet, but. I had to watch. I had to see the outcome. I had to make sure the dude was okay. Um, that's one thing that's pretty, pretty serious. Uh, we all we all do these channels and we all do this stuff, and a lot of the stuff we do is inherently dangerous. I took a fall last week, um, and this guy, uh, Mike, another Mike, ended up taking an oak tree. Um, he didn't get seriously injured. He he's gonna feel it. Um, he got hit, uh, he got broadsided by the tree as he was falling it and ended up pinned his kids, quick react, and got him free from the tree and everything, went to the hospital, nothing broken, just some bruising. But all this stuff is inherently dangerous. I have a disclaimer at the beginning of my channel for that reason. I don't, I don't want one of you guys to go out there and do something that I do or that you see on any other channel and get yourselves hurt. Um, but what we do is inherently dangerous. Uh, I cut firewood, a lot of firewood normally, and you heard me saying yesterday uh, on this video that I usually, I won't work without Rachel around um, or somebody. Uh, it used to be my buddy Eric. He used to be around when we were working. Um, and we would make sure that uh, we got our jobs done safe and we were we came out the other side, you know. So uh, just a just a quick, you know, we went down the rabbit hole, but be careful, folks. Uh, injuries happen. Thing, it, uh, life is short, and uh, just be careful when you're doing things. So that that kept me in the house for a little while. It was okay. I was able to sit, drink some coffee, uh, kind of wake up a little more than than I was. Uh, Mama is off doing some community service. Um, we are big on community service. We do a lot in the community, both the military community and the, um, the local community. So she's off. She's, she's uh, doing some, some community service work. She's working for 
Um, the uh, I don't know what what the what the actual acronym for the club is. Anyway, it's it's uh, they do a fall bazaar, um, and basically it's uh, local vendors and everything get together and they sell all this all these wares and stuff. And what it is is proceeds go towards military programs and and uh, and support programs for uh, military folk. So she's off doing that, which means we are not going to be cutting the wood, especially after what I saw today, but we're going to get some wood into the room through the window. We're going to get that corner cleaned out because that corner is a wreck. Um, it's become a catch-all for everything. And maybe if this wood stove would ever get up to full speed, uh, because I did light it, light it late as well, um, we'll get to working on some of this crazy wiring over here that I have that's just, you know, temporarily there. Um, we might get to the wiring, we might not. It all depends on on how this uh, how this day goes. It is chilly and high, 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 high winds outside. So, uh, thankfully, the winds are blowing this way. Like, like towards, towards that side, which means the house uh, or the barn is going to shelter me from a lot of the winds. But it is gloomy, windy, uh, really light mist, rain. It's just a day that, this is the normal day that you want to sit inside and, and do nothing. I mean, look at this. It's, it's, it's all gloomy, gray, wet. This is the day that any normal person would be like, I'm going to stay inside and I'm going to, I'm going to stay warm. <laughs> nah, not for me today. We got firewood to move. We got stuff to get done. And I only have so many work hours and work days because I do work a normal job. And yeah, unfortunately, I got to go outside. So I'm going to set you up. I'm going to throw some more wood in this, in this window. Um, I'm actually going to pick up some of these pallets and stuff and stack them up because while my wood was stacked on this wall last year, we're going to keep this wall free and we're going to start stacking the wood over closer to the stove so it's not so far to, to move it back and forth. But <laughs> like, I say, like I've said before, I'm a bad starter, but once I'm going, you can't stop me. So let me get moving so we can get some of this done. Yes, it's an adjustable wrench with a hammer face on it. One of my favorite tools. Okay, so we got a little bit of wood inside. Got the window back closed up. Keep the room room a little warmer. So now we have to tackle this. So it's just a bunch of pallets and the cardboard for burning. And then, of course, there is a motorcycle that I inherited from somebody leaving. And we'll get this area cleared out. And I'll start setting up the pallets and everything for stacking the firewood. Because this stack, or this pile, we'll go ahead and start over there, and we're going to run it across just like that. So that we can start getting wood closer to where I use it, by the oven. We'll get this all cleaned out. We'll get those pallets stacked. Sorry about the quick spin. We'll get the pallets stacked over here and there. And, yeah. Then, hopefully, Mama's back, and we can I can start cutting that. 
So, let's do it. Okay, so we are making progress. I had to stop for a couple of minutes. I had to take care of some some running around and some business. Mama's home. We're not going to cut wood yet because I'm still working over here in the corner. Um, it's getting there. I got to move some pallets, shuffle some stuff around, clean tools up, all kinds of stuff like that. So ain't nothing to do, but do it. So, while it looks like there's not a method to my madness, there is some organization in this chaos. We have dug our way to the corner. Now we're going to get rid of these, these not-so-good pallets. We're going to use these Euro pallets, which are a little sturdier, and they're all like a set size. We'll put them all in that corner. We'll get this all pulled out, swept up, and then we'll start organizing it. And then we're going to organize our way out of the corner to actually work across, get this under control, get all this under control. It's needed to happen for a little while. Um, we've been going full, full gas, full bore uh, for too long without stopping and pausing and organizing and, and doing all that. So... Now is the time that we have to do it um, because it's it's just overwhelming. So uh, I say so a lot. Um, the next time you see this, uh, hopefully uh, we'll have this out and we'll have the new pallets in. Um, I'm not going to film this little bit because it's going to get really dusty from me sweeping and stuff. So we'll just come back with the new pallets on the floor. Okay, so we got the corner clean. Flip you around. So, now it's clean. It's ready to stack some wood. It's kind of like Tetris right now. We're trying to fit pieces where we can. Because I still got to deal with that pile of pallets. But I'm running out of room in the barn. I got stuff everywhere. So, little by little, what we'll do is we'll move that pile of wood over there. So it's going to go right there in one, two, and just like that. So that is about, if I had to guess, maybe almost a week's worth of wood. And that was just the wood from the 20 minutes last night of uh, Rachel and me whipping up that, that wood on that saw. 
So you can see how it's fairly efficient the way they do the wood. Um, now we got a nice big clean spot where the wood was. And you see I got pallets here. I got pallets over here. There's pallets everywhere. Um, yeah, it's remnants of, I don't, you know, the everything coming in, the wood stove, all that stuff. So we'll deal with all the pallets. We're going to actually, we have a plan for those pallets, and it's pretty neat. But it is already after five, and I have somewhere I have to be in about two hours, which means I have to try to whip this video up and get it all edited and all that for you guys and get it out to you today. And I got a couple hours to do it. It's probably going to take longer, so I might be a little bit late going to my engagement. But that's all we're doing for today and sticking with the motto. If you're thinking about family, if you're thinking about, about friends, give them a WhatsApp or a WhatsApp, whatever works for you. You know you'd like to hear from them, so they'd love to hear from you too. So until the next installment, Auf Wiedersehen.